Hello everyone, I hope everyone is having a good end to their 2023. It's that time of year where I like to look back on the year, look back on the year in pedals and come up with my top 10 pedals of the year. Now my list is ever so slightly different to some other lists that you might see. I tend to not just pick pedals that were released this year. I like to take a look a bit further back and it's more about what pedals came across my desk, what pedals I've tried this year, even if they were released years ago. So without further ado, let's start with the first pedal. This is in no particular order. This pedal was actually released this year and it's gonna be the Mythos Hephaestus, the variable voltage fuzz. Now, I uh, missed out on the first run of these. Uh, Mythos released a limited run of these Hephaestus pedals in a bigger enclosure with Rhett Shull. And by the time I'd watched the video, they'd all sold out, unfortunately. But I really, really liked the sound of this fuzz pedal. It was something completely different to anything I've tried or owned before. And I really, really wanted one. So I was looking secondhand and, you know, the market these days, secondhand for limited stuff it can get expensive. Um, so I was really, really excited. When they came out with this standard version for their range, I bought one pretty much immediately, and it doesn't disappoint at all. It's the one of the most fun fuzz pedals I've ever played, and it's because it's like nothing else. It's great for riffing, it's spitty, it's characterful, and it has that lower octave glitchy thing going on sometimes when you back off this knob. So yeah, at number one, Mythos Hephaestus. <laughs> Number two, uh, I've played quite a few pedals from this company this year. Before this year, you know, I hadn't played a pedal by them for a long time, so they've sort of burst back onto the scene for me. And out of the three I've tried this year, I've picked the Origin Effects DCX Boost. I've tried the MEQ Driver, which is a crazy characterful mid-pushed studio type overdrive. And I've also tried the Halcyon Green, which is probably the best tube screamer. I picked the DCX Boost though because it's the one that's been on my board for the longest now. It's just this crazy good boost pedal that's got this preampy studio vibe to it. It's based on like a UA610 preamp. It's a signified a bit of a direction change for me when it comes to my tone overall. Before this pedal, I really liked bright tone, bright guitar tone. I thought that was the key to cutting through. And this pedal has a much more swampy, darker feel to it. And I think that's kind of gonna be a theme for me moving forwards in 2024, is kind of going for those darker, swampier, moodier tones. And it's kind of because the DCX Boost. Cracking boost pedal, seriously. I think I titled my video on this pedal, if you buy one pedal this year, make it this one. And I kind of still stand by that. It fits on anybody's board, just sounds great. I was really excited to work with this company because they've uh, meant a lot to me over the years, actually, probably without them even knowing. When this channel used to be called Dip Switch Demos, it was kind of because of this pedal company. It really inspired me, uh, sort of what they were doing with guitar pedals. And they still push the boundaries today. Uh, so I'm gonna pick the Chase Bliss Lossy. Now I could have picked the Gen Loss 2 because I got that pedal this year as well, but I've gone with the Lossy. Um, they kind of do a similar thing for me. They're very different in style, but I wouldn't put both on a board, for example. I've gone with the Lossy because, now it's taken me a while to put my finger on the reason for this. And I think it's because with the Chase Bliss Lossy, you can just set everything to 12 o'clock or one o'clock or two o'clock and it just does the thing straight out of the box. It just does what it says it's gonna do straight away. If you ever get lost with the Chase Bliss pedal, which you can easily do, it can be quite hard to get back to where you want to be. 
with the lossy you just set everything in the middle and it sounds great that's not the same with the gen loss too you know you do have to mess around with controls a bit more and a lot of people like that but with, for me this just seems like a much friendlier pedal and the sounds that it gets are like nothing else it's been a really inspiring pedal and i've used it a lot since i made the video which kind of surprised me but the chase bliss lossy is in at number three <laughs> past years I don't like to include manufacturers more than once um, but I'm gonna make an exception this year I'm gonna add in the mood mark 2 from chase bliss as well now you haven't seen this on the channel yet I got this only a couple of weeks ago but the the first version of the mood is probably still in my top three pedals of all time uh, it sign also signifies you know different direction change in my musical career as well I got it at an important time and I was just I used that pedal so much and I loved the mood mark one and the mood mark two is just better in every single possible way you can use it exactly the same as the first one but it does so much more and it feels a bit more musical um it's a bit more predictable but can also still be unpredictable like the first one so the mood mark two I'll probably make a video on this in the new year but yeah, the Mood Mark 2 is at number four for me. Okay, so next up, now this one, here we go. So this, this n number five is gonna be the Reeves Electro Darlington Flyer. Now, Reeves Electro have been hitting it out of the park this year, in my opinion anyway. Uh, the, in, with the introduction of the daughter board pedals uh, with, his, with Marcus's daughter Izzy, this is the first one of those daughter board pedals. I could have picked any Reeves pedal this year, but I, f I feel like this signifies a real important moment for Reeves's um, sort of journey as a pedal builder, and it's still one of the best fuzzers I've ever played. The facet, the facet which came out after this, is also incredible. I've also played the Twin Sound this year, but there's something, something about the Darlington Flyer that is just hits all the right buttons for me, and yeah, it signifies an important moment for Reeves. I also really, really buy into the whole father-daughter thing. I think that's so cool for Reeves. to number six now number six now a month ago in november i left my job as a full-time video editor for another youtube channel um i've been doing that for nearly three years and it, yeah i left that job to kind of pursue other things and one of those other things is i've been working with thorpey effects since about november on most of his social media content because of that i've had access to most of thorpey effects pedals and i really really love a lot of them in fact all of them they're, they're all brilliant but there are one or two that have really stood out to me um, and that i've implemented into my own rig one of those being which surprised me because i didn't really know much about it is the scarlet tunic the scarlet tunic is an interesting pedal it's very amp in a box type thing it's basically a selma treble and bass amp in a pedal it's got a really nice transformer in here it's got really great tonal shaping switches and knobs but really it just does a great chimey british tone ac30 high watt selma type of thing and it just sounds great as a stacking option with other pedals or as like an always on sweetener it's brilliant Thorpey Effects nailed it out the park. More people should be playing the Scarlet Tunic. Okay, so we're rattling through this. Uh, the next pedal may be a bit of a surprise because I did the video on it. I really enjoyed it. And you have probably haven't seen it too much since then. And that's just because it's been on my kind of little mini board that I take out to little jams and stuff. 
and it's just kind of stayed there. <laughs> it's an all-in-one ambience machine from a great pedal builder in France, and it also looks superb. It still might be one of the best looking pedals I've ever seen. This is a limited edition version of the Collision Devices Nocturnal. A great tape type delay with a really nice shimmer reverb and then with a really expressive tremolo in the middle. It's kind of a one-stop shop to weird ambient tones. That being said though, I've been using it on my mini board like a Pedal Train Nano as just my go-to reverb and delay sounds you know it can get wacky but if you turn the shimmer off the reverb and back down the delay it just does great reverb and delay tones it's very expressive um and you can get a lot out of it and it just looks great on a pedal board Seven, another pedal that you probably haven't seen me talk about too much since I did the video, but I've still been using it a lot, and that is the Tubesteader Eggnog. The Eggnog is a tweed amp in a box pedal, but it has a real valve in there, so it's all proper goodness, <laughs> if you know what I mean. And it also has like a JFET boost in the front end that you can slam that valve into really luscious tweedy compression and saturation. It really nails like a blowing up tweed amp, which is a sound that I I'm still looking to experience the real thing, but this is as close as I've got so far. It's, it's really, really great. It kind of only does, for me anyway, it only really does that one thing of that blowing up tweed sound, but it does it so well that it deserves a spot on this list. Uh, the Tubestead Eggnog is a ripping, ripping pedal if you want that tweed style sound. <laughs> We've got two left. The last two are from two great UK pedal builders. You guys know I like to cover a lot of UK pedal builders and a lot of them have become friends. These two are no exception. So first up, a pedal that I only did a video on a couple of weeks ago, but it's really changed my mind on a certain type of pedal and I'm using this a lot at the moment. And that is the NRG FX Nora. His take on a rat type of pedal. Um, a type of pedal I've never really got on with. I've tried so many of them and just never really found the one. And I think this is the one now. Um, and that's only because Neil at NRG Effects has tinkered with it so much that it's become something quite far removed from a rat now. But I just love the aggression that it can give you without being like fatiguing on the ear. It's a great rock and roll, higher gain overdrive like a lot of rats are, but this also nails a low gain characterful drive too. Superb pedal, superb craftsmanship from Neil as always. Check out this pedal. If, you are, if you're like me and you've never really found a rat that you loved, seriously, try this one out. I think it might change your mind. Eastern effects. Uh, we're going to talk about the silicon focus fuzz. Now, I could be talking about the limited edition germanium focus fuzz that there were only 250 units of. I think that also came out this year. He shortly followed that up with this silicon focus, focus fuzz um, that is not limited. And truth be told, I've AB'd them quite a lot now, and I think I prefer the standard version, the silicon version. It just 
it just sounds more like how I want it to. Um, it's a bit smoother, it's probably a, got a bit more gain, it's a bit more like a fuzz in my eyes. Maybe the Germanium was a bit like a, a, a blown up overdrive. This one is a bit more fuzzy and I prefer that. Check out one of these if you're if you've had trouble with fuzz before cutting. If you play in a big band and you want to use a fuzz pedal, but you, whenever you step on one, you disappear from the mix. Try this. I think it might be the one that you've been looking for. My top 10 pedals of 2023. It's been, a, it's been a journey this year. As I said, I left my job only a couple of months ago. Uh, before then, I was really working two jobs trying to keep this channel alive, almost doing the bare minimum, if, I, if I'm honest, to keep this channel going. And I'm looking forward in 2024 to really putting some momentum back behind this channel and trying new things again. Maybe we'll do another guitar build this year, but. I, I'm just excited to get back on the grind. Uh, we've got some other cool things, you know, as I said, you're gonna be seeing me on Thorpey, effects, socials, a bit more moving forwards, and some other things in the background. I'm getting married in 2024. Almost forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, um, so it's gonna be a great year. Stay safe, and I'll see you in early January. <laughs>